We have an ancient connection to our traditional territory since the beginning of time. We harvested what we needed to survive and we had a really good balance with nature. All our watersheds historically had plenty of fish in it to sustain us. The salmon uh, staple of our diet at one time was a monetary unit. Simply it's what kept us alive and healthy. We've learned how critical they are to the ecosystem. The fertilization and the life they bring back not only to the river, but to the trees. We're on the verge of extinction. A lot of our coho creeks are, are gone now. That genetic makeup that took thousands of years to develop is, is, is gone, gone forever. The bears are getting scarcer and scarcer and their food sources dried up. We'd like to remedy that with rebuilding the, our stocks and bringing them back to historic levels and having healthy bears. And we could uh, enter into the tourism market and bring that to the public. One of the things that we can do to help wild salmon is to remove the open net penfish farms. They're terrible for wild salmon and the environment. The whole idea around this transition is to give our wild salmon a chance. The salmon are an amazing species, resilient. The bottom line is the survival of the wild salmon. If we can work together, we can accomplish anything. Today we're sitting in the, the Umista Cultural Centre. It's uh, an amazing facility that holds uh, a collection of uh, many artefacts that were taken during the banning, and now they help us with moving forward. We've been fighting the issue of fish farms in the water for decades. <laughs> Fish farms were being occupied or surrounded by community people taking direct action. I think that got their attention and a realization that we, we have to deal with this issue. It was becoming um, a challenge for the companies uh, and you know they were taking legal action against individuals and so all of a sudden there became a bit of a political imperative for the provincial government to show they were um, responding if you will to this growing problem. This is the same big house that the Premier and some of the MLAs came to in 2017. Historic day. I mean, it's the first time a sitting Premier has come to actually listen to the leadership of the communities in our big house. We want fish farms out of the water. I am prepared to meet the game in Victoria with a delegation of your choosing so that we can talk about next steps. Today we're out in the traditional place that we harvest for hundreds and thousands of years. As you can see, the Kabilis here, or the, the clam mitten here on this beautiful beach. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a place called Lichis. It's the birdwood group. And you can see the clams squirting behind us here. We had fish farms on the other side that recently closed. The first part here is digging the clams in the grid. Each grid will be put in a sack and it'll be measured. We'll compare it from year to year. It also gives us a good opportunity to see the health of the beaches. Over the years, a lot of our beaches have been affected by the fish farms. Our last beach we're gonna do is called Kerry Bay. It was a, a bay that produced a lot, a lot of little mix, and uh, today there's none there. Feeding their fish, these pellets that would go to the bottom and a lot of algae came from the feed in the bottom and the, the whole beach turns to mud. We attributed that to the fish farms. Yeah, we're hopefully we get a couple of a couple of our delicacies, some jolly. Yeah, yeah. crack it open. Right. You can see why the why it's so sought after. Eh? Look at that. It's beautiful. The 
A few years back, we teamed up with uh, two other nations, the Mamalilikla and the Kwikwasuta no Kahwapmis, to uh, help protect wild salmon. The first process took several months. We met in January, the team started meeting in April, and by the beginning of June, we had hammered out a letter of intent. And the letter of intent established that we would have a consensus process about what happens to which 10 years. So what's the priority? Getting the farms away from the nearest natal rivers and streams. When they come back from the open ocean, our wild salmon have sea lice on them. What open net pen fish farms do is they become year-round hosts for sea lice. And that becomes a deadly barrier for the out-migrating salmon. So where little wee salmon are leaving, we need those farms out of there because of the sea lice problems and disease problems potential. This process is about recognizing that Indigenous people have a right to food and we're not going to get into some study that said, you know, it only affects this percentage of sockeye and it well, but it doesn't do it with child and It's like, we're not arguing science. We agreed though that there needed to be a transition plan. Uh, yeah, it was a compromise. We had to change our stance from uh, immediate removal of the farms to a phased out approach. Uh, we had to take into consideration the job loss that uh, would have happened, not just with the workers in the industry, but all the suppliers and the chain. The transition plan that sees 10 farms gone within the first two to three years and it's only remaining seven so there were 17 farms that were deemed to be within our territorial waters those seven farms also will be decommissioned unless they, we find a path and i'm not sure it's there but you know the companies know that that we would agree that any of them could stay longer the industry was not a part of our decision making but we brought them in we sent them a matter say here's our mandate we are looking for solutions that save wild salmon. What can you do with your operation to change that? And they brought their plans. We weren't, of course, satisfied and said, well, you still haven't answered this question. Look at our mandate, not your mandate, and figure out, can you adjust to that? And by the time we got to the end, they were going, well, yes, we could move that farm and we could do this. And by the time we presented their consensus recommendations, they were standing there saying they could support it including the requirement that there would be a monitoring program and that they would allow our staff through an agreement that we had yet to negotiate onto their farms and that they would share their data with us. What our team is doing is seeing what's actually happening on the farms. Information gathering that is going to be important when it comes to the final decision. We're there exercising a regulatory function of government. Well, only money that the companies are providing is for us to independently test their fish. All of the rest of the money that we have is coming from the BC Salmon Restoration Innovation Fund. Of course, there are those who felt we should have just said no to every farm. We didn't want to lose this opportunity to achieve what we did. Very nice sediment. It must have looked a lot different before this farm was here. Yeah. Sponges everywhere. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tritium senile anemone. No, early on I wasn't that tickled with it. I had to digest it a little more. I knew I wanted a, a bigger result, I wanted a home run. But as I looked at it and thought about it and talked to people, I realized that this is a, a pretty significant uh, outcome. Probably what is, as close as we've come to a real government-to-government -government conversation. My hat's off to the government's uh, negotiating team. They were great to work with. It was refreshing, I guess you could say, to be able to have your voice heard and really be part of meaningful discussion and have results that everybody was happy with in the end. 
It's a combination of tromping up and down the sides of rivers and trying to track down what are functioning, uh, say, spawning grounds. We are here at Botany Fish Hatchery here at Nimkish Lake. Uh, we'll be doing our swim survey upriver here. We'll just walk on a shallow side here. And just when we get to the far corner, we'll push ourselves out and we'll float our way down. And taking record of counting fish, whatever we see. We'll be looking for chum or just anything in the water, we'll keep record of it. Monitoring fish farms and rivers, creeks, and uh, just restoring uh, salmon habitat is the main, main concern. So your camera's going to be upside down, that's okay. So you probably want to start off on your headpieces. Yeah. So we're going to start off with sea the lice. headpieces. Check this. Sea lice. When you go on the farm, you need to take that with you. When you do your walk around the farm, just quickly scribble the farm layout. If it's straight, if it's double pens, if you're seeing herring. Don't forget to mark down if you're seeing lots of wild birds. We're going to sample the sea lice that the Atlantic salmon have in the fish farms. Anything we can see that shouldn't be there, we're going to report back. We were at Cypress Farm, which is Cermak. Pen 102 had herring in there, which is one of the things that we're looking for. We sampled the fish for sea lice. Male, female no egg. Female no egg. Male, region four. They were pretty well covered in males, females, Chalamus, Caligus. They had sea lice all over them, as well as lesions, bite marks from predators. I'm, I'm really thankful for that, the ability to get out on the farms. I think we all are, to be able to get those boots on the ground and do sea lice counts. We monitor our estuaries. We happened to be in Hoya Sound. I stumbled across this hooligan, which had a louse on it. It was really concerning to me because these sea lice are now starting to attack uh, different species. They're a traditional uh, medicine. We make hooligan grease out of it. I can remember when I was a kid, my mom feeding it to me when I was sick. DFO requires you to do something when sea lice hit three per fish on a farm. Our standard has been two. It's not the number of lice on a fish, it's how many lice are on your farm. So if you have a million fish and each of them has three lice, you have three million lice. You want to influence the uh, operations of those farms while they're in our territory, even though they're starting to disappear. And so I think that exercising a regulatory function was an amazing accomplishment that kind of gets lost. Cruise along the shore, go at a nice slow speed and hope you see some fry. Okay, climb up, bro. I think it's important to keep an open mind and let the science speak for itself. The research is really going to help us determine whether or not it's a safe industry. There's a whole bunch of skills that were learned by the people that are doing that work for us now. And those are absolutely transferable to all kinds of different things. The, uh, habitat restoration work that our, our crews are doing. The salmon in our territories have been depleted and being a keystone species, I'm quite concerned about the grizzly bears. Rebuilding those stocks will be important not only for the wildlife, but for our people as well as the food source. You see the orcas coming in? That's the first time in well over 25 years that the orca whales have, have come in here. So something's changing. I think we also created a belief in other nations, such as those in the Discovery Islands, that they could present 
a position that said, you have to recognize our right and we don't want them here. There will not be any farms here unless we somehow feel that the risk associated with that is something that is uh, not going to impact on wild salmon. The salmon are an amazing species. What they do to come back, to reproduce, to complete their life cycle is amazing. And all we have to do is get out of the way. The whole idea around, around this transition is to give our wild salmon a chance. If we give nature a chance, man, it'll come back. That's our hope and our prayer. Dino, have you having fritters tonight? It's a beautiful, simple way of life. We can feel our ancestors wherever we go because there's indications of them being here, being here. You have a look at this beach. It's, it's thousands of years old. Right from the beginning, we said we were not against the jobs. We would like to see land-based fish farms that can employ our people. We're very strong supporters of moving these operations on land. Will it be difficult, challenging, cost a lot of money? Absolutely. They won't be killing salmon. It's been an amazing experience to be a part of, a real privilege to work with all of the other nations on this. That's always been uh, our motto as the Muscomans out and the people, is that if we, if we can work together, we can accomplish anything. And the bottom line is the survival of the wild salmon and bringing back salmon into our territories so that we have a reliable food source, not only for ourselves, but for the wildlife population in our territories. Amen.